rock stars it's rocks and i don't even know what number this review is it's rocks and i am coming to you today with the review for love and hip-hop atlanta season 7 episode 13. so let's get to it shall we all right you guys so let's get the outcast out of the way first <laughs> jasmine Okay, she's still in Houston, but of course she's not with the rest of the group. She's unwanted. Hell, she popped up with Tiara. She is sitting down to have a discussion about what went down with Tiara and Just Brit. Okay, now Just Brit was like, Erica was cutting food so bad she had to get up out of there. Okay, did not want no drama. However, she wants to know what happened with Jasmine and her confrontation with Rashida. Or should I just say her apology because Jasmine keeps on telling us that that's all she wanted to do. Of course, we don't think that, that was the best time to do it, but Rashida had her moment. She was able to tell off the mistress in exactly the way that she wanted to without getting out of control, without looking like she was losing it, okay, without getting ratchet, without fighting, okay, really without even cussing her out like she could have, like she should have, but... Hey, look, it's neither here nor there. Shit is over with. Fuck, they probably friends, family, all of that. We still got to do it for the show. So, Brittany wants to hear what happened. And Jasmine is just saying how when she walked in there and everybody was just like, oh my gosh, you know. And how Rashida told her that she was, um, uh, what was the word? Not calculated, but a manipulative individual. Okay, Tiara with her messy ass. She come telling us, no, she actually called you a fucked up individual. Okay, what's with Tiara trying to keep this drama going? I mean, I understand that's your girl and you want to support her and make sure, but you just, you going a little too hard. Now, Jasmine decided that this is what she wants to do. Apologize and maybe get on, you know, with just getting this baby to get the, meeting the rest of the family. Everything else is nothing. Okay, so you just really reiterating that, you know, D'Lo was there beforehand and, you know, the niggas split when um, Rashida found out. We already know all of that. Okay, that, that's, that's definitely played out in the blogs already. So, I just feel like Tiara, I, I don't know. I'm, I just, I, I can't really figure out if she's really genuine and just trying to be a supportive friend or she's just really trying to keep mess going. Um, but whatever, Just Britt says that um, now that she knows Jasmine, you know, she's Team Jasmine and she hopes that it all works out for them. But as far as Jasmine goes, you know what, ain't nothing you can really do but sit back and wait for people to, if they're going to, you know, figure out if they want to forgive you or not. It's not impossible. We have seen crazy shit happen on Love & Hip Hop. Fuck, look what happened with Mimi. Everybody was pissed at Mimi and now Mimi has become um, a fan favorite who just kind of sits on the sidelines and just be chilling all the damn time. Still on the show. Still got her peach, so to speak. And um, so, I mean, it's not impossible for folks to come around to Jasmine. But it's going to take some time, girl. So you better, you know, you better just get comfortable. I have a feeling we'll see you next season anyway. Now back on my bullshit. Hey, back on the bullshit. Back to the bullshit of the ranch. I have to give you guys a little bit of the Frost Facts because this isn't really their segment. We got to talk about just everything that went on. But, of course, it starts with Rashida. You know, Rashida, I'm real proud of myself that I didn't lose control, that I handled myself like a boss bitch that I am. She didn't call herself a bitch, okay? But she's a boss, and she was able to talk to Jasmine, and she didn't cut up. You know, she got all her friends there, and they all had her back fine. Now it's time for her to um, show them a good time. All right, they're going to get on this bus for four hours. I said, four fucking hours? Y'all going to a whole night? Why? <laughs> Damn. Okay, but she said they getting on this bus for four hours. They're going to this. Um, remember, they're going to the dude ranch. So she got two buses full. Her bus got the regular calm folks. I guess that would be Mimi and her girl, her and D-Lo, um, and, you know, th th that little group. And then everybody else, all of the riffraff and shit is on the other bus. That would be Carly, um, Sean, Melissa, uh, 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 Jock, 2.0, Spice. 
Okay, got all of them on this bus. Okay, what a motley crew. And, um, you know, of course, there's going to be drama over there. While they're on their way up there, they get a blowout on Rashida's and them bus. Well, I'm imagining that these two buses that are filled um, probably has camera crew and everything, and everybody's lugging, and they ain't got enough room to put everybody on one bus. So they have to wait for the other bus to come. Okay, so, you know, hijinks and shenanigans. All right, everybody waiting on the bus. All right, nightfall comes, and finally the bus comes and I guess I don't know how long they have been on the bus I think she said maybe an hour um, so they still had quite a ways to go by the time they get to the ranch it's the middle of the night everybody tired look like it's fucking freezing everybody get their keys and uh, you know it's a ranch so it's not the glamorous digs of a hotel on a island and beach and waters and all of that okay no we at the dude ranch so you gonna get these <laughs> quilts that look like your grandma made it and you know eyelid curtains and all of that but you know what nobody can complain too too much fuck it it's nighttime everybody want to go to sleep next morning uh we see that rashida and d -Lo, they in the same room you know the frost facts me and d -Lo was in the same room but we not in the same bed i said bitch a lot don't care who tell it <laughs> y'all can pull that shit if you want to but okay they couldn't put another room up for d -Lo. fuck it's your trip you couldn't say specifically that d -Lo needed this other room oh, okay you know, they sitting around, they talking before they start their day, and she's just talking about how, you know, she still didn't appreciate the fact that Jasmine popped up. But, you know, I guess it was going to be bound to happen, and she's still happy that, you know, she handled herself like a boss and all of that, okay? But all that being said, D-Lo still need to lo learn how to control his side hole because we don't want too many more of those. And, you know, D-Lo, he ain't got nothing but praise for his wife, okay? Because the nigga's so sorry, he just gonna sit there and let her always have to handle Jasmine. Ain't never, can't never say nothing. Mom's always worried with his stupid ass. I can't stand D-Lo, you guys. I really don't like him. Like, if I saw him right now, I'd probably be, like, snarling and shit. <laughs> You damn show she think I ain't about to run my pressure. Fuck him. But whatever, we gonna get this day started. So, you know, we see Jock, we see Sean, Brosco, BK, whatever the fuck you wanna call him, okay? They getting um ready to get out into the world of the ranch. You know, they got they country boy, cowboy shit on. They about to meet up with the rest of the girls. We see Tokyo, Sierra, Carly. Who else? They walk into the wagon i guess to get to wherever they going as well and you know tokyo still has a attitude and I, I did really think about what you a lot of you guys were saying about tokyo last week and tokyo can be whiny okay i do like tokyo i think tokyo still has some um immature ways but i think that she's trying to grow up we got to remember that tokyo is only 23 years old okay and um not real exposed as far as certain things are concerned we know that she's a virgin i'm not saying that she ain't been through some shit i'm sure she has but you know all, i think all of that contributes to who to, to tokyo is so you know when i was sitting there listening to her you know still kind of talking and complaining i was just like okay yeah yeah i, I think i do see it I, I i do see it she's still my girl though anyway they meet up at the uh, wagon carly She's in a weird space. We don't really know exactly what the issue is now. She does give Jock a hug. Everybody's like, oh, one day is feast, the next day is famine. You don't know, never know how them two are going to be with each other. When they get on this damn wagon, Spice is on there. It's really awkward, but up until now, I guess Spice and Tokyo have been able to avoid each other. They ain't really had too, too much drama. Um, but everybody is on this wagon, and they're going up to watch a pistol-packing Paula Okay, swing the guns around and um, give them a show while they sit around and um, eat their barbecue and, I guess, burritos. <laughs> so, okay. Pistol Pack and Paula, she does whatever she got to do, flip it around, all of that. You know, Jock asked her if the guns was real and she do shoot up in the air. So, yeah, nigga, them is real. And it was all cute and whatnot. But we get to talk in and Tokyo's apologizing to Rashida and telling her, listen, I'm sorry I didn't make it to the grand opening, but you know, I had some shit happening. She had a mishap and Spice took offense to that. You had a mishap. What's what, you know, what was the mishap? You know, you threw the purse at me. 
Okay, of course, we off to the races. They arguing back and forth about the shit, about them, you know, fighting. And Tokyo was saying how Spice was very disrespectful to her. You know, that she's tried to come, didn't have that kind of energy. Spice was just kept on digging and pushing and pulling at her. And Spice was like, well, you know what Carly told me that I was like, back it up, back it up, back it up. Carly told me. That is always when you, when you got to start a sentence like that, you already know. That is some trickery. I'm telling you, that fucking Carly is a bird. She keeps so much shit going on, okay? Spice was like, Carly told me that you said fuck you. And, and, and Tokyo was like, yes, I did say to uh, fuck you. Because at that point, it was fuck you, fuck Tobias, fuck everybody. I don't give a fuck. Tokyo was trying to explain to her that she was just like, fuck it. <laughs> and you know, that's all encompassing when you say that. But of course... Spice was only hearing her. They going back and forth, yelling over each other. Rashida gets up, you know, wait a minute, everybody just calm down. You know, ain't nobody paying no fucking attention to Rashida. You know, she's like, that's it, that's it, I can't do nothing with it. Yeah, sit it on down because it's bound to happen. So they trying to tell them both that they need to be quiet. And Tokyo was like, look, I'm trying to be stop all this shit, but the bitch won't stop. And as soon as she said the bitch, you know, Spice was like, bitch, I guess that's her trigger word. <laughs> That bitch had didn't channel her inner um um uh what's the girl's name on uh, on the New York loving hip hop child I can't think of her name but the one that threw the shoe and hit old girl in the, in the right in here region child that spice must have had perfect aim honey and threw that fucking plate and when I tell you the whole plate was on Tokyo <laughs> she took off running over there and of course security came and it was this big old ruckus because everybody goes around Tokyo because Tokyo is the bigger person so I assume that they think that she is the stronger person so they try to hold her back and then I think one of the guys had then got spice all this commotion going on whilst they try to drag spice off and she's arguing back and forth with tokyo next thing we know 2.0 who another one i fucking cannot stand like i honestly don't like her because i feel like she is just trying to take any opportunity to get some camera time all of a sudden she starts arguing with sierra i'm thinking to myself like i don't even remember the fight that they had last season i mean that's how you know non-important and inconsequential that 2.0 is in my life but evidently 2.0 still has a bone to pick with sierra because of some shit that happened with carly again having to do something with carly so they start arguing back and forth now they had been dragged spice to the van but now we got to deal with 2.0 and sierra arguing and bk trying to pull sierra back and trying to break them up and then you know she starts disrespecting him like fuck you bitch you know you a whole ass nigga too fuck you i don't know if she said nigga but you know it was all this bitches and you know men don't like being called that so then he was like fuck you ho and he said a whole bunch of fucking curse words that they bleeped out but um he had a whole bunch of words from miss um sierra so then sierra was like you know what i not Sierra. 2.0. She said she was going to fuck up Brasco. I said, bitch, you ain't going to do nothing. Y'all cut this out. Cut this out. So they didn't drag her off to the, to the same van as Spice. So I guess, you know, now that these two have something in common, she get on the, on the, on the, on the van and she's saying how she want to, she want to fight Sierra. She just want to fuck her up, you know, because she always got some slick shit to say too. Sierra is outside. Like, why the fuck are we fighting? Like, woo, 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 you know, what did I do? Okay, Spice had already blamed Sierra and said that she was two-faced. We didn't get to really hear exactly why she was saying that, but it has something to do with Carly saying something. Okay, so Sierra is genuinely confused. All this is going on. The van, they're like, get the van up and out of here, please. Okay, all these good white people, the good white country people. They looking like, boy, we ain't never seen no niggas like this. Cut the fool. Thank God we in the middle of nowhere. That shit was funny when we saw Mimi, honey. Mimi has changed her whole approach. She's over the drama. Okay, she got her girl. She happy in her relationship. She ain't about to fuck that up no more. She been on the hot seat. She know how it feel to be there. She ain't trying to go there no more. That bitch was over there eating her food like, um... <laughs> It's so all this commotion going on. Spice jumped back out the van. She come running over. Titties about to come out, bitch. I'm going to need you to get the next size. That's the next order of business for you. Child, she come running out. Then next thing you know, here come um uh, two point. I said, child, this is entirely, entirely too much. And only the people that really should be fighting is Spice in Tokyo. So now everybody's got to break off into their little individual groups and try to figure out what happened. You know, we got Rashida and Sierra and um, who else? 
I think they was walking with somebody. You know, they was mad. You know, Rashida was like, Tokyo and Spice don't even know each other. It don't make no sense that they fighting like this. They need to sit down and talk. Sierra's like, look, I had already talked to Spice and we had agreed that we was going to squash everything. So I thought that's what we was fixing to do. Ain't nobody knew that they was going to be throwing plates and blaming me for shit that I still don't know what she's talking about. Rashida was just like, well, you know what? She decided that she going to get them all together. Well, Spice and Tokyo, we're going to get them together so that they can, you know, try, try to talk and hash it out. Um, oh, I think Erica, I think Erica was with them now that I think about it. Then we see Carly, you know, she walking on the road by herself, contemplating, feeling kind of bad. I guess she feeling mighty low. Jock sees her and catches up. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. She's trying to clear her mind, I guess. And Jock was like, I just don't understand why people won't mind their damn business. Okay. And she was like, that part. And I said, bitch, what part? What fucking part are you talking about? You the main reason why everybody right here fighting with your run till that ass. Always got some shit to say. I know earlier she said that she was going through it. I was just like. All right. You guys know how I am. Okay. I be giving you passes when your parents are sick. Okay. I've been there. All right. So we know that her dad is sick. And so she is. I'm not going to say using the situation. Maybe she got it on her mind that her dad, you know, she can't quite 100% commit to these scenes because she worried about her dad. You know, Jock asked her about him and, you know, she was just like, I can't talk about him because I'm going to start crying. So, um, fine. I, I hope her father does pull through. Cancer is a horrible thing to have to deal with. Okay, so, you know, she's talking to Jock. You know, he's trying to be there. He's trying to be supportive. You know, he gives her a hug. He's talking about his burritos that he had earlier and gave him gas. And, you know, she's making sure that he don't shart. Okay. Did you fart? She said she could smell it. You know, they start laughing. Those two actually are funny together, even though Carly get on my fucking nerves. Then we see old scruggly ass Melissa. She decides to go and sit down with Tokyo because, like I said earlier, Melissa realizes that Tokyo is a lot younger than everybody else, so she might not carry herself the same way. Not only that, is she's not really hip to how shit works when you in these kind of cliques and circles and how people push your buttons and fuck with you all the time. So she gonna sit down with her. Gives her a teddy bear. I thought that was nice. And she's just trying to get Tokyo to understand that even though Spice was fucked up with what she did, you know, Tokyo has to take responsibility. And Tokyo's like, I I'm trying, okay? I'm trying not to be that person. You know, she did say on Instagram recently that you know she's real close with Super Saiyan and what's the other one Big Booty Judy I believe it is um, she said you know they had had talks and they was trying to prepare her and make sure that you know she presented herself the best way on this reality show you know and so I kept all that in mind when she was talking to Melissa saying you know that she used to be a different kind of way she used to always want to fight and all of that but now she realizes that she has a platform okay even before she got on this show you know she represented for the big girls whether she want to be there or not okay you got young girls that look up to her all right you got big girls that look up to her you got black women that look up to her you know it's a lot of people that is watching her and she realizes that she's got to carry herself better so I guess she might have been disappointed but with what was happening but also because the fact that spice kept on pushing her buttons and she was just like you know she just got to learn how to deal with it but all that rah rah shit that spice be coming with you know she's like i can't get with that all right so if she gonna be doing all of that all the damn time we we ain't gonna never be friends because i tried to talk to her with some sense and she just kept on fooling you know she kept on digging at me melissa was like well you know what if we try to get you guys together to talk and she was like that's fine but like i said the rah rah we can't do so then we see Rashida. She didn't set up a meeting with Spice and Tokyo. And they got them all the way on different sides, all the fucking picnic tables. <laughs> like the security is like, look, we tired. Ain't nobody feel like doing all this jumping over tables and trying to get to them. Just get them real far away from each other so it'll take a long time for them, you know, to get to each other. So Rashida tells them, look, I'm going to let you guys talk. I'm going to get out of it. Okay, I want you guys to try to solve this before we have the group you know, bonfire tonight, because if y'all gonna be fighting and shit like that, you know, they bound to get put off the fucking ranch, so get it together, I'm gonna leave, so then that's when they get to talking, and I think it's a little bit of a whole bunch of different things, one of it being a cultural difference, like, I don't think that they, you know, from her being from New Orleans, and from um, Spice being from Jamaica, I think that the way that they just already communicate, 
it might not translate well for each group. And when, you know, when emotions is heightened and shit and you mad, you can see how that shit can go real left real quick. So, Spice is, like, mad at her for throwing the purse. Spice is mad at her for saying, you know, fuck you. And um, she explains her again, like... I did say that, but it wasn't relayed to you the right way, okay? I was just saying, fuck it. Fuck everybody at this point. It's not specifically to you, but I know that's the way that Carly made it seem. And she was like, well, you know, you didn't have to throw the purse. And she was like, yeah, but and you didn't have to keep on digging at me either. Okay, it was like you wanted me to do something. But she was like, you was disrespectful. And, and, and Spice was like, wait a minute, did you say bitch? And she was like, what? She said, did you say bitch? She said, I mean, I I don't know. Like, I'm just saying. She was like, okay, just as long as you didn't call me bitch, I guess that is a trigger word for Spice. But but Tokyo was like, bitch, I can't understand you half the time either. You know, because Spice was like, well, slow down talking. And she was like, no, you need to slow down. Fuck, we can't understand each other. And she was like, okay, just don't call me bitch no more. Okay. Tokyo was like, well, that's just how I talk. Just call me bitch back and we gonna be fine. (laughs) So they agree to... I don't think they're going to be the best of friends, but I think they have agreed that, you know, what it was a misunderstanding that right now the main problem that Tokyo has is with Tobias, not with Spice, and uh, we're going to move on from there. So then we have the group, and uh, they're at the bonfire. Everybody's back out there, okay? And, and, and it looks like everybody's emotions is back on even keel, okay? And everybody is kind of willing to sit around and just listen. Everybody but 2.0, this bitch still got the puffed up chest. She's still mad at Sierra. I was like, here we go with this made up beef. I guess you see that the shit ain't going, um, you know, as far as Stevie J is concerned, maybe, you know, she might need to try to lock down another storyline. So she still got a problem with Sierra. And Sierra was just like, girl, anytime you want to do something, if you feel like you're feeling froggish, then come on and leap. You know, because 2.0 was like, you want some more? You want some more of me? I was just like... <sighs> I don't know who done got this bitch all amped up. She obviously feels like she is a fan favorite. She's a beautiful girl, okay? But I don't think she has any talent. I think that she is trying to be the next Jocelyn Hernandez, which she will never be. And, um, yeah, I don't like her. I'm usually a pretty good judge of character. And some about her I do not like. I wish Sierra would fuck her up, even though Sierra's not a part, you know, about that life like that. I don't think so. It would be nice to see somebody drag her ass, though. All right, rock stars, let me get off of here, get on back to work. Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm um, It's Rocks, the channel's for It's Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Not plan on doing the same, trying to block out that sun behind me. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.